I'm going to try and put together a quick little video um, to show several things. Um, first of all, this is uh, white polymer clay. And it's, I, I wish I could remember the thickness, but it's probably like number four or so on the pasta machine. And these beautiful flowers have been painted on the raw clay uh, through a silk screen. This is my silk screen. Um, since I have so many hobbies for years now, I have been making um, silk screens of my own. I cut them up and use them and I started making them and here's another little one which I really should probably fill out this sheet and put this little one in the empty spaces and have a pattern but at any rate I make these um, silk screens I have made them and I have literally hundreds of them and I've used them with my polymer clay work of course they work on on everything pretty much and um, here's a pretty one um, for the purposes of uh, today I wanted uh, an outline, an easy outline, because what I wanted to demo was using um, alcohol inks, and maybe I'll go and get my ink tents uh, blocks and use those as well to color in some of these um, designs. Um, not to get too far afield, but part of me uh, wanted to create canes that look like this and some of you might be able to do that which I'm very fond of the idea of making black and white canes that have like outline of uh, interesting designs and then slicing them and then coloring them as I'm about to do on this sheet as you need them so that you don't have to use a lot of colored clay but you always have the beautiful crisp uh, outline. So for some of you out there who are perfect caners, which I am not, maybe that's the uh, the better way for you to go instead of silk screen. But as in life and many other things, <laughs> there's always more than one way to accomplish something. So here I am. I've got this um, clay and it has my silk screen. By the way, I have some tutorials on how I've used the silk screen on pottery, earthen, earth clay. And uh, one of the things I have found, this has a shiny side and it has a matte, a dull side. What I have found is a, the perfect tip is a lot of times you have to prime these. I call it priming. And what it means is make these open areas, which you see <clears throat> in white, receptive to whatever medium you're using, whether it's paint or in the case of uh, pottery work, it would be like underglazes. At any rate, what I have found that uh, you, I don't have to use a, scre a screen print on a frame, which is the traditional way of using silk screens. I found that I could make them and cut them up in these little pieces. But here's the biggest tip. I run these under water, under the sink. And then I take um, a towel, preferably you know, a terry cloth towel. And I put the terry cloth on top and on the bottom to take away most of the moisture, not all of it. See, these have a very crispy, you know, they're not, and they're not primed, which is what I like to call it. You prime these holes so that the, the medium will go through it. But once you put them under water, they soften and they get very pliable, unlike this. And you, you take them from the towel, and they're, they also will have a, this uh, shiny side gets a tiny bit tacky, just a tiny bit, which is just enough to use on a lot of surfaces. And it works beautifully on clay as well. So not all silk screens um, are the same. The ones that they've made for, polymer, uh, for polymer clay are very fine detail. But I, I believe that the tip works for those as well. But for this type that I have made. This is a, not the fine quality silk screen material, but maybe one up from that. Anyway, I have found that when you soften them up again by putting them in a faucet, under a faucet, putting them between uh, terry cloth towels, and then uh, removing them, they're easier to work with. So that's my tip for using silk screens. Now I'm going to, um, here, here's, uh, 
I did another video on how to improvise and use something on hand um, instead of the palette. Uh, Tim Holtz this year in 2018 has come out with this wonderful um, uh, uh, alcohol ink palette, and but mostly it's the idea that's wonderful. And the idea is you can squeeze the various colors into these um, uh, receptacles. And this happens to be a receptacle from an extruder. This You can see the shape of that extruder. It turns out I never really liked this extruder. I can't remember which brand it was, and I gave it away. But it had all of these little uh, indentations to hold the discs that go with the extruder. And of course, they were perfect to hold the the uh, alcohol inks. What's really nice, I can turn them upside down. Nothing happens, no accidents. And all you do is reactivate them with alcohol and it works. Now the splotches you see on the side will help me tell what color is in that um, and in those receptacles. I didn't realize it, but <laughs> because I'm near the window, I can also preview the color on some of these flowers, which is because it's uh, translucent. But what I'm going to do now is go get my uh, pens. I also have a, a short video on these uh, water brush pens that I bought from Amazon that I have filled um, a couple with alcohol and I filled one with, um, let's see, oh, I like to use the Gilder's paste as well. And for that, the medium I need to soften and paint the Gilder's paste on is um, either a turpentine or other solvent. So one of them is filled with that. And then I have one filled with uh, glycerin. So hang on just for a moment and um, I'm going to go in. Okay, I'm back and um, what I'm going to show you is uh, these are my ink tents blocks. And I'm going to use some of those to compare the color difference between that and the alcohol inks. Um, I have this rather large set probably 70 something but beautiful colors and here's some samples that I have made so I can see the color. Anyway I'm going to try and use those to paint um, with my um, brush pens. Now I made a little video and I'll probably try to append it to this one. Remember I said turpentine or mineral spirits um, and I have some in there and that would be for the Gilder's paste and then I have glycerin which I could also use for perhaps the alcohol ink uh, and I know I can use it also for the um, ink tents and of course alcohol probably should have a couple with just plain water because the ink tents pencils are fine with water as well but since I have the alcohol ready let's go so I'm going to remove the cap remember to put it on the back because I'm always having trouble finding where I do with the cap. So if I can just remember to put on cap. Now what I really need is, um, I'm going to pause this again to go get my paper towel. Okay, I'm back. I have paper towel and uh, this has dyed the, the tip. It doesn't have color on it because when I squeeze the uh, alcohol ink down, you know, it comes out clear as you might be able to see. Anyway, here I go. I'm going to start with the alcohol inks. Sorry for the noise. And I'm going to use this, uh, let me see. Let me go and try, oh, oh, you can't beat the red. So I've put a little bit of alcohol in there, as you can see. And now I can start painting. Isn't this fun? And see how the alcohol will give you um, the light colors, you can push the dark toward the center. And it works beautifully, doesn't it? Yes, and if you'd like to add add the colors. But anyway, think about, let me add some uh, gold color in here. You can change the color. I didn't even wipe my brush for this. You can just color things the way you want. It's uh, You can actually make these look orangey by adding the little yellow, which I just did. But um, I can just pick up any color I want, and off I go. Make them bright, 
I'm going to have to fix a lot of these because, uh, and I'm just doing this for uh, demo purposes, although I might just use it. What's really nice is I can go over the black paint, which is just nothing more than black craft paint, um, to um, so you don't have to be really precise. Probably best not to get any on the outside of the design, but you can see. And then if I squeeze a little alcohol on there, pick up, I can actually pick up some color. If this one is too bright, I'm just wiping it on a paper towel. And it can go lighter the longer you paint with the same um, alcohol ink. But you can see <laughs> a little bit of alcohol ink goes a long way. And there you go. I can actually pick it up here, just squeeze a little bit of color and move it sideways. Going over the black doesn't seem to mo uh, bother it a bit. The black paint, as I said, is dry and it's uh, it's not interfering or or any of that. So um, I just wanted to show how easy and fun this is. Now I could just let this dry and cut it up and use it for whatever. I'm thinking of making some jewelry pieces where I won't even use the whole flower. I'll probably cut up half the flower and use it with something else. So now, all right, let me, that's with uh, these great alcohol inks. Now let me try using my ink tense pencils, or I'm sorry, blocks. But you could also use the ink tense pencils, but I prefer the blocks. So now I'm going to kind of use a similar color here. I'll just pick one and uh, try another flower. Let me move this over. Yeah, let's try this one. All right, so now I am squeezing the alcohol onto the block and picking up color. Looks like this is just a little bit, I haven't picked up enough pigment. And just compare, compare the, uh, the difference. You get a, a real pretty watercolory look. I imagine you could do the same thing with the, the uh, alcohol inks if I uh, put more. Now let's see if I can get, uh, the more I brush on here, See if I, I can get, yeah, I can get some pretty bright color. I may not be finding the exact same color as I used in the alcohol ink, but you get the idea. Anyway, as I push this around, it uh, does a beautiful job as well, but something perhaps a little more subtle. Uh, the the Inktense pencils or blocks are really bright, and I believe if I used them they seem to be picking up more of the brush strokes, though, whereas the alcohol inks did not, uh, which is another whole look. It's not quite as intense, but maybe I have not picked, although it seems to me I've picked a bright, a bright color, but maybe I've not gotten down into the pigment. And here it goes, a little bit brighter. Now, I think it's showing a few more of the... Uh, brush strokes. Let's see if I can know. Which is nice because you can make it look a little bit more artistic. It's very hard for me to paint and concentrate and um, and worry about the color. What I'm going to try and do now is see if I can pick up a lot of pigment and see how close I can get it. The alcohol inks um, I think I'm favoring at the moment, but it depends on what you want, uh, how much pigment you want. Now, one thing about this, uh, once it dries, these uh, ink tents blocks are permanent. Um, and if you heat set them, which of course you'll do when you um, cure your polymer clay, they're permanent, really permanent. So you get the idea, and um, these little pens with alcohol inks, I mean, with I'm going to add orange. Let's see, I'm hitting an orange one now. 
as opposed to whoops the uh, red takes a little longer for me to activate the pigment on the blocks because I have to then use which I'm doing here now yeah I have to go back and forth on the block to get the intensity of the color that I want but I just wanted to show you how fun this can be and like I said if I were adept at creating um, really good canes I would actually make canes that um, that were out of black and white with a lot of white space and the beauty of that of course is you don't have to have a lot of different sized silk screens as I do I showed you a smaller one and of course I already have those but um, you could just reduce you know make a nice good sized cane and then uh, reduce it and have it in all kinds of different sizes as slices and then put it on your work and there you go so I hope this has been fun I wanted to talk to you about the the brushes and how I fill them so it's always available plus they're so easy to clean because now all I have to do is squeeze sorry squeeze the alcohol out through the brush and just wipe it and wipe it and wipe it so I don't have to clean anything until it gets to um, alcohol and then I can actually use another whole color like the same very same brush I'm going to use a blue that was without changing brushes without cleaning anything and here I go I'm using the ink tents and let's see if I can combine it with um, the I stick my pen right back my brush right back into the color now I'm using this color which is the alcohol inks anyway I think you've gotten mostly what I was in wanting to show let me see that's a dark that's more of a cobalt and that these are alcohol inks they seem to move a little bit better but you can you can use the ink tents and see how I'm going across really <laughs> I mean you really don't have to be very careful do you so anyway I hope hope this has been useful to you and might stimulate some thinking about um, this whole black and white thing because see one of the things I don't like about making canes is sometimes I'll use colors I don't like or I'll get tired of the color you know I'll just get tired of uh, what I've made and I'll think oh my gosh do I still want to keep using it and yes there are some wonderful things you can do on the internet with old canes yes there are and I've tried a few of those but once I have an aversion to a cane that I've made that I don't really like it you know look at how pretty that is I haven't picked up any more pigment I'm just using what what I had and uh, so how pretty that is anyway this is all I have for today there's 19 minutes so it's not too too terribly long now to think about what I'm going to make out of these maybe some earrings or some jewelry anyway wonderful pens great idea for <laughs> drying up your alcohol inks and just reactivating them so they're not messy and then using ink tents ink tents blocks as well all right for now hope you enjoy it